Welcome to Public Domain Video Theater presented by the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me at box13 at greatdetectives.net. Now it's time for today's episode of Dragnet. The original air date is April the 1st of 1954. And this is Season 3, Episode 31, and the title is The Big Girl. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was Wednesday, October 7th. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of robbery division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Didion. My name's Friday. Sixteen people had been robbed, beaten senseless, and then shot. The victims all gave the same description of their assailant. A tall, beautiful woman. We had to stop her. It's my partner, Joe Friday, Mr. Maloney. How are you, sir? Find out anything yet? Still checking, Mr. Maloney. We'd like to have you tell us exactly what happened the night before last. Well, she sure had me fool. That's all I can say. Well, you're not the first one, sir. There's 15 others ahead of you. Would you mind telling us what happened? Well, I started to drive home on Central Avenue... I guess it must have been about 18th Street. Hey, will you get my pillow shoved there? Yes, sir. Thanks. Get kind of numb laying here. Yes, sir. If you'd go on, please. Well, I pulled up for the arterial and I saw this gal standing on the corner. She was hitchhiking. You remember what she looked like, how she was dressed? You know, kind of flashy, but nice clothes. Good-looking dame, tall, long, blonde hair, beautiful eyes. You sure about the color of her hair, are you? Yeah, it was blonde. What happened then? Well, she got in the car and we drove off. We talked a while and then she pulled a gun on me, told me to drive up an alley. Now, where was that, do you remember? Around 32nd Street, 32nd and Central. Then what? And she took my wallet, watch, car keys, everything I had. Mm-hmm. And then she made me get out of the car and lay down on the street. I felt it shove that gun against me. Hey, could you fix that pillow again, please? Oh, sure. Thanks. She pulled the trigger, I guess. That's all I remember. You don't recall her slugging you? Must have happened after she shot me. My face is pretty bad, huh? You'll be all right, Mr. Maloney. Do you think you'd recognize the girl if you saw her again? <laughs> I sure would. Nice looking, you know. Tall, blonde, beautiful shape. Doesn't figure, does it? What's that, sir? She'd make more money on the stage than she would rolling guys like me. Must be crazy. Maybe. I wonder if you'd mind taking a look at these mug shots, Mr. Maloney. See if any of these women look like the one who shot you. Let's see. Here, let me help you. Can you see her right here? Yeah. No. How about this one? No. This one? No. Let's see. No. How about her? No, she's better looking than that. Mm-hmm. Well, these are all the same. This is the last one. How about her? I don't know. It might be her. The hair was fixed right. Maybe a little more makeup. I'm not sure. All right, Mr. Maloney, thanks very much. We'll be back to see you in a day or two when you're feeling better. Okay. Say, my name won't be in the papers, will it? No, sir, not unless you give it to him. I was just wondering. A wife might not understand. Giving a girl a ride, you know? Yeah, we know. May I have these, please? Sure. Thank you very much. We'll check you later. Okay, officers. Sure hope you get a line on that thing. We'll try. Bye. Sure messed up, isn't he? Yeah, that dame must have some other motive besides money. Maybe she's psycho. Could be. What'd the doctor say? Well, he took a pretty bad beating. He'll get over that, though. It's the bullet in his back. But he'll be all right. The bullet shattered part of his spinal cord. There was nothing they could do. Yeah. 
paraplegia. He'll never walk again. We left the county hospital and went back to the office. We got out a local broadcast for the woman whose mugshot Maloney had partially identified. Her name was Beverly Allen. She had a record of three arrests and one conviction of 242 PC, assault and battery. After we checked in the office, we went across the street to the crime lab. Lee Jones had already examined the bullet taken from Maloney's spine and the empty cartridge casing found at the scene of the shooting. Both of them bore the same markings as the bullets which had wounded the 15 previous victims. From the striations, the gun had been previously identified as a 38 Colt. Maloney's car was examined. We found nothing. 8.35 p.m., we went back to the city hall. I checked the stats office. Oh, hi. How'd they do? Well, they went back seven years on this run. Yeah? Checked all Caucasian women, 5'8", 130 pounds, 25 years old, good-looking, blonde or brunette, all of them with either assault or robbery records. Yeah. Came up with 19 names. 17 on the list have already been checked out and cleared. What about the other two? One of them here is a Catherine Collins. The other's Beverly Allen. She might tie in. That's all we got to go on. You want to pull the packages on the two? Give me the list. Okay, I'll check, see if we got any calls. Okay, I'll get right on it. All right. Righty out there? Yeah. See you later. Right, Skipper. Hi, Skipper. Where's Smith? Down the hall, checking out a couple of reports. That fellow Maloney tell you anything? No, nothing that helped very much. Same old story. No report on that broadcast we put out in Beverly Allen yet, huh? No, not yet. You banking on it? Well, it's the first lead we've had in 16 nights. Yeah, well, it better work out. Why? What's the matter? Take a look. A woman bandit gets 16th victim. Beautiful hold-up queen robs and shoots restaurant worker. Yeah. It's on the editorial page, too. Here's something else. What's this? Memo from the chief. Letter from the downtown citizens committee. Another one here from the civic club. They all want answers. Well, we're doing what we can, Skipper. You know, we got two other teams of men working. Special squad from Metropolitan Division. They're on it, too. I don't care what you've done. You've got to do more. Sixteen nights, sixteen robberies and shootings, nine victims still in the hospital. When do we blow the whistle on her? Well, we've checked out every possible lead. We've got a want out on one suspect. We're checking out another one. You know, we talked to Maloney. Exactly what did he tell you? Well, he gave us a description. It doesn't match the others in one respect. What do you mean? Well, as you know, in ten of the sixteen cases we've had reported, the victims tagged the girl hitchhiker as a blonde, long hair. Four of them say she was a brunette with short hair. Two of them tell us the girl had red hair, long. She must be using wigs. It's the way we got it figured anyway. We've checked every place in town where she could have rented or bought them. No leads. What about some of the bigger supply houses out of town? Well, Stuart and Creasy have started in checking them. It'll take a little time. Then you got practically nothing on the woman. Same gun, a 38 Colt. Lee Jones examined the bullet they took out of Maloney's spine. Hmm. How's he doing? Not good. The bullet smashed his spinal cord. His legs are paralyzed. Beth? Hi. What do you got? I pulled the packages on two possibles in that woman hold-up thing. No good, Joe. Why not? What about that Allen dame? Jail. Kansas City been in for a month. What about the other one? Catherine Collins been in a Seattle hospital for the past three months. TB ward. Where does that leave you? Right back where we started. No leads, no suspects. All right, starting tonight, we cover every street and alley in the central area until we get that woman. I'll call Metro, get more men and detective cars from them. Right. Get out more decoy cars. Have the area covered from sundown to sunrise until further notice. Get that woman. Right. Hot shot, 211 and shooting, Gatewood and Cameron. Roll on it. The name on his driver's license said Leslie Haas. We found him 50 feet from the corner of Gatewood Alley and Cameron Street. His face and head bore the marks of a vicious beating. There was a single bullet wound in his left shoulder. He was conscious when we arrived. Frank checked the area for physical evidence. I tried to speak with the victim just before he lapsed into unconsciousness. How's the victim? Just passed out. It's the worst one yet. Take a look, Joe. Shell casing. Yeah. 38 caliber. The latest victim was taken to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital. The shell casing, which we had found at the scene, was taken to the crime lab for examination. It was compared with the others. Sergeant J. Allen confirmed that the markings on the bullet which had wounded Haas matched those on the bullet which had been taken from Maloney's back. Both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The dragnet operation for the woman bandit went on. The men in the special detail covered every street and alley in the central area during the hours of 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. During the next five days, 11 suspects were picked up, brought in for questioning, and then released after the victims failed to identify any of them. Saturday, October 10th, 10, 16 p.m. It looked like we got our first break in the case. You like to sit down, miss? Yeah. The officers tell us they picked you up near First and Wall, is that right? That's what they say. You mind telling us what you were doing down there? I went down to meet a friend. 
With a gun? What about it? Well, do you always go to visit your friends with a gun? It's the silliest question I ever heard. Yeah, well, then you shouldn't have too much trouble giving us an answer. You got a cigarette? How about the gun? Well, I tell you. I've been having a little trouble with my ex-husband lately. I bought the gun for protection. You got a permit for it? No, not yet. I'm going to get one, though. Did you register it? Yeah. Here, with us? Yeah. I'll check it. Hi, Reed. Frank Smith. I want to check the gun with you. Colt 38 automatic. Mm-hmm. 456-292. Oh, dash 292. Yeah, I'll wait. Can we see your identification, please? Well, I showed it to the other cops. Isn't that enough? Could we see it? Is there any money in that wallet? Yeah, a few dollars. Would you take it out, please? No, you keep it. Just the wallet. Donald Lorraine Stewart. That's your true name? Yeah. That's your present address? Yeah. Yeah, Reed? There isn't, huh? Okay, thanks. We've got no record in this gun. Well, then you just better check your records again. I'm telling you, that gun's registered. I did it myself right after I bought it. You employed? Yes. Where? At a dress shop out on Wilshire Boulevard. Now, listen. I don't know what all these questions are about, but you better get in touch with the people who record things and have them check this gun again. I'm telling you, it's registered. I did it myself. I'm sorry, ma'am. There's no record of it. Why'd you buy the gun? I told you. I'm having trouble with my ex-husband. I bought it for protection. He's always coming around the house, causing trouble. I thought maybe I could scare him with it. That's why I bought it. I've got nothing to be ashamed about. I bought a gun. I brought it right down here, and I told the police all about it. I haven't done anything to be ashamed of. Gee, I wish you'd tell me what this is all about. All right, miss. There have been a number of robberies lately committed by a woman who answers your description. Woman armed with a 38 caliber automatic. And you think it's me? Is that what you mean? You think I'm the person who's been doing these robberies? Well, you match the description, you got the gun. Probably a lot of people who match the description and have a gun, too. I'll get it. Robbery Friday. Yeah, he's here. I'll get... All right, I can take it. Yeah. There is, huh? Yeah. Well, don't worry about it. No, those things happen. Right. Thanks very much. I'm afraid we owe you an apology, Miss Stewart. Well, I imagine so. That was Reed down in gun records. Yeah. They found the registration. Been misfiled. Reed thought he remembered the number. The information checks out. There, you see, I told you. Yes, ma'am. Could I have my gun now? Well, I'm afraid not. Why not? We're going to have to book you. I haven't done anything. It's a misdemeanor to carry a concealed weapon. But I registered it. I came right down here. I told him I had a gun. I'm very sorry, Miss Stewart. We have to file on you. Well, that's not fair. I didn't know it was wrong. Now, look, miss. They told you that when you registered the gun, the registration means you can keep the gun in your home. It doesn't give you the right to carry it around. You know that. Well, what am I going to do? I don't know, ma'am. You can get a lawyer. They'll be able to tell you. This is a bum deal. My ex-husband can walk around and threaten me, and you don't do anything about that. But I carry a gun to protect myself, and you put me in jail. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am. If you want to file a complaint against your husband, there are laws for it. There can be a law for just about everything. All I know is I'm going to jail. There isn't anything worse than that. Maybe there is. What? Well, you might have run into your husband with that gun. Donna Stewart was turned over to the arresting officer and taken to the main jail to be booked on a charge of violation of Section 12025 of the Penal Code. Tuesday, October 13th. Frank and I checked into the office. You doing any good? We got her stopped temporarily. She hasn't pulled a job in almost a week. That doesn't bring us any closer to her. I don't know about you, but it's got me beat. 17 jobs and we're no closer to her now than we were before. What'd you find? Nothing. The last four women we questioned were clear. What about the other men on the case, Skipper? Did they get anything? Murphy and Rafferty are down at the record bureau. Be in in a minute. They've been out talking to some of the victims again. Tough one. How about a composite picture we got enough to work with? Artists and crime analysis is working up a couple of sketches now. 
A lot of guesswork. What about the description of the clothes the girl wears? Anything there we can start on? No, other than the fact that she wears flashy clothes. None of the victims has a very good idea what she looks like. Tall, good-looking, nice figure. You know, all that. Nothing out of the ordinary. Robbery, did he? Oh, yeah, Andy. Yeah, when did it happen? Uh-huh. Turn up anything yet? Yes, I have. All right. Dress. Coat. Sweater. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got that. That could be. We'll check it out. Yeah, thanks for the call. Right, we'll be right over. See you. Anderson over in burglary. What's he got? They were checking back on a job out in Hollywood. Came up with something might help. What is it? One of the picture studios had a burglary about a month ago. Thief got in the wardrobe department, then went next door into makeup. Yeah. List of the stuff they took. Dress, coat, red sweater, brown skirt. Stole two makeup kits, four wigs. Andy says they're listed as two blondes, one redhead, one brunette. That might be it. Any leads as to who pulled the jobs? Not yet. Clothes and wigs might be what we're after. They came up with a single footprint, size nine. That's a pretty large size for a woman. They're not sure it was a woman. Print was made by a man's shoe. popular misconceptions of the working detective as offered by the fiction writers is the picture of a man with amazing talents for detecting evidence, analyzing human behavior and motives, and then almost as if by magic fitting all the pieces together to form the solution to the crime. The real life picture is a little different. The working detective is a job. In a sense, it's as practical and down to earth as baking bread or practicing law. It's his job to protect citizens and apprehend criminals, and it's a job he doesn't do alone. To assist him in collecting and analyzing evidence, he has the aid of the crime laboratory. To help him identify oddities and suspects or possible suspects, he has the record bureau, latent fingerprints, the statistician's office, the ballistics department, a battery of men and machines to aid him in reaching conclusions based on fact. Thursday, October 15th, Frank and I re-questioned all of the 17 victims of the woman bandit. We asked them one question. Could their assailant possibly have been a man dressed as a woman? The majority didn't think so. Those that did weren't very sure. We followed the lead through. 9.25 p.m. We checked into the city hall and we went to the stats office. We asked them to make another run for us. Because of the information we'd gotten regarding the burglary at the motion picture studio, a new card was punched up as a master for the collator. Out of the thousands of cards that would be checked automatically, only those cards would be selected which carried the following information. A code punching indicating a male Caucasian about 5 foot 8 or 5 9, 130 to 35 pounds. Feminine features, size 9 shoe, impersonating woman with a robbery record. In addition, the master card was further punched to select the M.O. the thief had used. Carrying a 38 caliber cold automatic and hitchhiking rides. The clerk in the stats office told us the run would be finished by 11 o'clock that night. Captain Didion called and asked to see us right away. Call your wife after dinner. Yeah, I'm sorry, I did. She's mad as a hornet. Why? What's the matter? Tomorrow's the kid's birthday, and I forgot to buy the cake. Too bad. What you gonna do? Bake one, I guess. You told me to stop the car. Well, I'm telling you, Captain, I just grabbed that gun and slapped that kid just as hard as I could. Hold it just a minute, will you, please, Mr. Collins? Much obliged. This is Mr. Amo Collins, Sergeant Friday, and his partner, Frank Smith. How you do? Can give you a light, Mr. Collins? <laughs> Not just yet. Mr. Collins, would you mind telling these men what you were just telling me? I was just telling the captain here. I'm down here on a vacation. I'm from Sacramento. That's so? South Sacramento. I was driving down your Figueroa Street, and I picked up this girl hitching a ride. She tried to rob me. Collins took the gun away from her, subdued the girl, and brought her in. Where is she now? Interrogation room. Murphy and Rafferty are with her. Description match? Not too close. Sounds like you didn't have too much trouble with her, Collins. Well, now that I come to think of it, maybe I didn't. When she pointed that gun at me, I just grabbed for it and slapped her as hard as I could. Sure took the starch out of her. You got anything on her? Yeah. You mind if I go now, Captain? No, we'd like a stenographer to take your statement. Anything to oblige? Fine. Here, let me light that for you. Oh, you never want to light one of these. Is that right? Look right. You want to come with me, please? Don't forget your case. Full of liquor cigarettes. I really got the hammer. Bye-bye. Just for now. They got anything on the girl, Skipper? Not much. What you got to say? Murphy got her to talk. Doesn't look like she's the one we're after. 
What's your story? Said she read about this woman bandit in the paper, decided to try her hand at it. Needed money. Yeah. Claims her husband left her. She's pregnant. Needs the dough for a hospital. She live here? Up the coast, Monterey. Got in town four days ago, staying at the YWCA. We checked there. She's not lying. Did you call Monterey? Yeah, they confirmed it. She left there last Wednesday night. She's not the one. Are they going to take care of having her booked? Yeah, as soon as they get a statement. Well, looks like another lead that didn't pan out. We got one. What is it? Fourth and West, like 211 shooting. Anything on it? Tall blonde with a gun. <laughs> woman bandit's 18th victim was a truck driver. His name was Harry Reese. His story differed little from that of the first victim. The woman was hitchhiking near Alvarado and 3rd Street. He gave her a ride. She robbed him at gunpoint, slugged him, and then shot him through the left shoulder. He described her as a tall blonde, attractive and well-dressed. Guess I should have known better. I read about the dame in the newspapers. Are you sure that the person who held you up was a woman? I don't get you. Well, what I mean is you don't think it could have been a man dressed like a woman? No, no, that don't seem likely. Pretty sure it was a woman. All right, Mr. Reese, I see the ambulance is coming. We'll check with you later at the hospital. Joe, we got a call on the radio. Four blocks down on Colfax, a cab driver just dropped off a fare. Yeah? Said she was in a big hurry. What about it? Described her as a tall blonde. Offices? Yeah, what do you got? It just happened a couple of minutes ago, just a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, it looks like blood stains all over the sidewalk there. Yeah, that's what I want to tell you. Couldn't have happened more than a couple of minutes ago. I had this fare, see? I picked her up at Fort and Bixel and drove her over here. She paid the fare, got out of the cab. Yeah, go on. I just pulled away from the curb when I had a shot. At least it sounded like one. When I looked back, I see this dame down at one knee near the door to the hotel here. That's this hotel for women. When I backed up, she was gone. And that's when you noticed the blood stains? That's right, yeah. I figured I'd better call somebody. What'd the girl look like? Not bad at all. Tall, blonde, pretty girl. Nervous. Did you see where she went? No, I didn't. Get the number of the cab? Yeah, I got it. 
on January 14th, trial was held in Department 89, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was tried and convicted of assault with attempt to commit murder, nine counts, and robbery in the first degree, nine counts. Assault with attempt to commit murder is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of not less than one, nor more than 14 years. Robbery in the first degree is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of not less than five years. Welcome back. It's rare that Dragnet has a story that really does feel like it could have been a fictional detective story. Uh, But this one is proof, I guess, that sometimes if truth is not stranger than fiction, then it can be just as strange as. It was interesting that the detectives raised the question, and I think it's an interesting one as to why the uh, suspect was doing this, because it definitely went beyond robbery, but we never get an answer or even much speculation on it. There are a couple of interesting things in this episode that I think are worth talking about. Uh, The first is Art Gilmore, who plays Captain Didion in this episode. And if you've watched the 1960s series much, he's actually a very familiar face. And one of those few actors that appeared in both the 1950 show and the 60s show and in a similar role. He did a dozen episodes of the 1950s TV series, all playing the role of Captain Didion. In the 1960s TV series, he made 14 appearances but as seven different police captains and one lieutenant. The one lieutenant he played would actually become a recurring role on Adam-12 as a supervisor character and as the officer who had trained Pete Malloy. He made 14 appearances in the first two seasons as Lieutenant Moore and uh, then returned in the final season as Captain Moore. The other interesting thing is looking at how the stats office uh, really works and this use of the card system in this pre-computer era. And we get to see how a search that might take seconds today took hours back then, but was still a big leap forward for law enforcement. Well, that's all for now.